Last time on Silo Season 1, Episode 1, Allison. Allison goes outside and Holston decides to follow her. We meet Juliet, the engineer that's running the entire silo by herself, and the judiciary and the enforcers, the keepers of the pact, want to keep everyone inside. What would you think about today's episode? Uh, episode 2, I really liked it. I gave it an 8 out of 10, which is high. Oh. Uh, mostly because the entire time I was watching, I was intrigued and engaged. I wanted to know what's the, what's the drill, what's the water, what's the tunnel, what's outside? Is it green? Is it toxic? Who's judicial? So I was engaged the whole time. I do think there's some issues with how the society is run and maintenance problems still, but didn't matter. I was intrigued. Um, I thought they underestimated how darkness would be scary. So if you have a light that's you know at nighttime sometimes you'll have the stars and the moon and ambient light from lights and stuff so if your flashlight goes out no problem if you're underground holy shit when the light goes out it is dark you cannot see there's literally not a photon available to see uh (laughs) so that would be scary but overall loved it eight out of ten what do you think yeah exactly right when you're in true darkness it is terrifying like like true darkness when you can't see anything it's scary as heck um overall i gave this episode an 8 out of 10 as well and i'm getting i'm getting fallout plus game of thrones vibes because three care three characters that i individually liked they're all gone this show has me on pins and needles this is the beginning episode and they're wrapping duct tape around the suit to seal it Mm -hmm. or something before holston goes outside that duct tape looks a little not sticky See how it's not quite sticking? <laughs> That's right. It's that, like aluminum, aluminized tape foil, but mm-hmm. there's definitely lots of air gaps in there. You need, to, you need to squeeze that tight. So is this realistic in the sense that the shelf life of this tape is it's losing its stickiness, or is this user error where they're just sort of taping it without a good seal? Could be both. This is user error. This is definitely user error. But it could be a little bit of both in the sense that tape does have a shelf, sure. shelf life. But gosh, look at these gaps. Oh, I, I assumed that since the silo was so old that I, any tape that was made before in the, in the before times is totally gone by now. Totally like like stickiness uh, doesn't last long. I figured they were manufacturing their own glue. Like maybe they got horses around there turning them into glue. That's kind of kind of sucks, but you get the point. And so so anything here would have been recycled aluminum with some homemade glue stuff. I don't know. I don't. I've never tried to make glue at home, but I guess it's mm-hmm. doable. And and then yeah, they need to like squeeze it, pinch it, pinch it tight so that it gets like an actual like like seal, you know. So you're thinking this is aluminum tape? I guess so. I mean that was my hunch because it does have that crinkliness which looks like aluminized tape that that I use in laboratory. Um, I guess also you, people use it in like aircrafts. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, yeah, duct tape would have folds that are rollier, where these has like creases, where that's a pretty thick aluminum tape. It just seems like a waste of aluminum resources because they don't have like aluminum mines and stuff. Right. So you'd think they'd use fiber for the backing of the tape. Hmm. You know, so if they're growing hemp or something in their <laughs> farming regions, they could make yep. make a cloth or something out of it and then put the yeah. stickiness on it. To use aluminum for tape? Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Maybe they got like a bunch of soda cans down at the bottom of the deep down. I mean, maybe. Maybe. That's still a waste, but maybe it's they have no other use for it. But, but to be fair, like they're sending this beautiful, like pristine, never been used before, clean room suit. They're sending it on a person outside to die. Like they're they're pretty wasteful. Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe they have like this. It could be because it's the apocalypse. You know, there's a huge abundance of lots of things. They're like they're struggling to use okay. all of these. And other mm-hmm. things are like ultra scarce, mm-hmm. you know, and this could be one of those things where it's just like, we got aluminum, whatever. That's right. Could be. Like if I had nothing but toothpicks, I might build a bridge out, a bridge out of them. Like if there's nothing else I got, but that terrible idea. Uh, terrible idea. <laughs> what did you think uh, this gas was for? So in the airlock, the door closes behind Holston, the airlock doors in front of him, they feed in this gas. Is there a difference in pressure between the inside and the outside? Was this like a composition situation? Like why? F- it's it's also kind of misty. Like it's condensed I've, liquid. Little droplets. I have no idea. I have no idea why they would need to put gas on this person. Uh, I can understand if they were like trying to like de-louse 
if somebody was coming in, you want to make sure that whatever is on them from the outside world gets cleaned off before you get into the, the clean mm -hmm. environment of the silo. But why would you do this when they're going out? I, I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I guess if I can't think of a physics or chemistry reason for why to do this, maybe it's psychological. Maybe like the the people that are on the top are like, let's let's mess with them as they're le leaving out the clean. Let's spray this stuff. It's actually just water. Like it's just mist. <laughs> like it's totally fine. And like they're playing like mind games. <laughs> we're playing mind games with people that are going to go outside to clean. Maybe maybe it's an automated system that had a purpose in the past. Okay. That. You know, you just can't turn it off. Like when the door closes, this misty stuff comes in. Uh, what would be the purpose when they originally made the silo? So maybe the silo was where they lived and people would go in and out. Maybe maybe cleaning mm -hmm. wasn't a one way one way task been then. So at that point, if outside was irradiated or chemical or I don't know what, what went up bad on upstairs, but mm -hmm. but then you would want these like showers to like blast off to like clean off whatever debris, whatever radioactive mm -hmm. or toxic stuff was on you. And then since the culture of the silo has become a one-way thing, then they just they run this as people go out only. I see. So just in the past, they always needed to clean off their suits. Yeah. Probably just before you go out and before you come back in, clean it off. Mm. And so there's just mm. this automated system came on. And now it doesn't. they don't need it, but they can't turn it off. Right. Or maybe they just forgot yeah. how to. And it's back in the before times, and they've lost a lot of knowledge. That's right. Yeah, interesting. Also, where this gas is supplied from is the supplies haven't run out after 250 years. Mm. Mm. Which it might be just water blast. Because like speaking. water is, is, a, is a polar molecule. It's really good at just ripping stuff apart. And so that would, that would be okay from, in my perspective, that they have lots of water, this ground, ground water coming up, and they just mystify it. Oh yeah, maybe it just taps into the um, you know the regular water system, the aquifer they, that's down underwater. Yeah, they forgot where the valve is or how to turn the system off, and it just continues to function. Sure, I like it. I like it. Okay, okay. I like it. Makes sense. Still okay, super okay, wasteful. silo. Wait, wasteful? Super wasteful. Super wasteful. cool suit though. Okay, okay. So, Holston goes through the airlock. He's walking up the grand staircase up to the the door of the outside. These mm -hmm. lights. They come on and off every time somebody goes out to clean. Yet none of them are, looks like they're all work in perfect working order. Who maintains these lights? I mean, it's been 150 years before somebody has actually gone outside. So they, they can't be sending out people to maintain these lights. So uh, I guess they're just really good light bulbs that never yeah, maybe, bust. Maybe this is a world without planned obsolescence. Like you know this thing about like how light bulbs used to be super good, but they actually got detuned so that we buy more. Maybe that's what has happened. Maybe that didn't happen in this world. So like these light bulbs just 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 clean forever. Or maybe you know when they built the silo, they were building it for long term. So they built these. They didn't. They spared no expense on the light bulbs, and they just <laughs> you know made sure they would last for. They had like a thousand year lifetime or something. That, that, that makes a lot more sense than what I said. <laughs> That's right, because they're, they're expecting this like doomsday stuff. So like they're like, we need this this tunnel to function for however many thousand years that it might, so that you get like the highest grade quality stuff you possibly mm -hmm. can, because it's the future but, of humanity. But your question, your observation does bring up a good question: Is this an alternate universe where humanity has gone on a different path, or is this a future of our universe right now? I oh, always assumed yeah. it was future of our universe right now, but it could be alternate, in which case the planned obsolescence thing may not have happened. This could be an alternate universe where World War III happened and the entire surface of the Earth was nuked, mm -hmm. um, which doesn't necessarily preclude it from being this universe, so it could still happen. Oh, scary. Right. I guess we'll learn more about the timeline. Interesting. He's so intrigued. Yeah. Yeah. Oof. This is the outside. So this is, we actually get to see the outside. I thought they weren't going to give us a big reveal. Mm. This is what Holston sees when he's outside and there's birds flying. It's green. It's awesome. Um, but I had the question, he still falls over. I mean, yeah. does green and life actually mean non-toxic? I mean, not necessarily. It right? could be green and alive, but toxic to us. Right. Exactly. Right. There, there are parts of the earth right now that is inhospitable mm -hmm. to us, but hospitable to, to other life. For example, like these like bottom of the ocean, these thermal vents, like human can't mm -hmm. live there. We send little robots down to go look, mm -hmm. to go spy on like the shrimp that live down there. That's right. Um, 
I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh heck, <laughs> imagine if this thing was all like poison ivy and he has like has like an allergy to him. Like, that's everyday types of plants that could still kill him. Um, yeah. So I don't know. This green right. life doesn't not necessarily mean good life for humans. That's right. Because and if the atmospheric composition or whatever radiation is outside and this life has adapted to it, mm. we haven't. So that's, could that's talk a very about? good point. Yeah, because humans, by trapping themselves in the silo, guarantee a particular environment, and we will adapt to that environment. Maybe we get used to like the steamy steaminess of being inside. Stank, there. stank, and but uh, outside here, like the, the life that was able to survive, yeah, was able to survive with whatever was there. All right. Um, the thing that I saw in this this frame was where's Allison? Because Allison is supposed to be laying on the ground there. Yeah. She like was supposed to be here, but she wasn't. Right, which makes me wonder, does Holston actually fall down? Because uh, Allison's maybe. not there. They did show him sort of like struggling for breath, all right. zoomed in on his face. But it wasn't obvious if that was in a falled over posi fallen over position than if he was just standing. I'm thinking that it's some type of computer graphics imagery change and stuff. Like, like mm. Allison actually walked over, but from the inside of the silo, they just projected to the people that she had fallen over. But actually she had like walked away. I, I, also, I also thought, why do they put them in suits when they go outside? Um, if they're gonna die, they're gonna die. Why put them in a suit? Maybe they were feeding in noxious gases into the suit to kill them to guarantee it. And that way, when shown on the feed, you know, right. he, he or she, whoever sent out to clean would die. But then that doesn't explain why Allison isn't here. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. A lot of questions. That's, that's exactly the same thought I had that that, mm -hmm. that suit actually has bad gas in there. Which means maybe Allison's helmet is somewhere outside, but yeah. her body isn't. We'll see. We were know. thinking this would be this would be like a big reveal at the end of season one. Actually, they revealed it, and now it has more questions. No, the, and yes, answers. exactly. <laughs> Whew. This show is fun. Oh yeah, here we go. So the working class people in the deep down below um start fighting because i don't know why and then this guy steps up and gives him a pep talk let's see listen up calm down listen up that is fucked up but it is no excuse for us to lose our shit let him fight up top or in the midst here in the down deep our business is keeping the lights on keeping the generator running keeping the silo alive here in the down deep we'll just get shit Done. Okay. Okay. So my observation was this was okay, so they got pride in their work. Fantastic. But they're getting so riled up about pride in their work, but they have a tremendous amount of power. They could shut the whole silo down. Ooh. Right? And the people mm -hmm. up above could not answer if they went on strike or something. That's right. But they have so much pride in their work that they would never do that. When are they going to take control of their livelihood and get better quarters and get better respect? Well, why was pride enough to get them all riled up? Are you suggesting that the workers seize the means of production? That's right. <laughs> I mean, that's right. They have all they have all the power here because everyone in the silo relies on them to keep them alive. Mm -hmm. I'm focused I mean, on that else guy's is... throat. That guy like shouting like that. That must hurt yeah. so bad. Yeah, I know. That's right. Yeah. Oof. But it was, was weird that, that he wasn't fired. saying something else. He just used pride in the work was enough to get them back to the job site, you know, or whatever. It was weird. Maybe maybe he's not actually one of them. Maybe he's a plant from the up top guys. He's like, like whip them up and keep them working. Still, I mean, but that was, even if that's true, he's like, you know, some plant of judicial. He mm. knew what words to say to rile them up. He didn't say, mm. he said, pride in our work, now get back to work. Mm. Which, if I was a worker, I'd be like, uh, I have pride in my work, I wanna do a good job, but also, them quarters look nice up top. <laughs> How about give me some? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Why do I get the steamy, stanky bottom part? I wanna live that's on right. the top. So if I, if I work in the steamy, stanky shit, I need to live in the awesome place, and the people who work in the nice place should be down living in the steamy, stanky shit. Actually, that's a very fair trade. That is a very fair trade. I, I would vote for you for president, actually. That's a super <laughs> fair trade. Actually, yeah. So that brings on to all questions about how leadership is is um, chosen 
and how mm. sheriff gets power and how judicial gets power, why they have respect, uh, and why the working class down here in the deep down below, what did he call it? The deep down. The deep, the down deep. Fucked up, but it is no excuse for us to lose our shit. Let them fight up top or in the midst, here in the down deep. In the down deep. The down deep. Yeah, so, you know, they they could exercise a lot more power. Very interesting. Yeah, they could hold everyone hostage. That's right. I mean, not, not, not in a bad way. It doesn't have to be like holding people hostage. Oh, it could be yeah, like yeah. exerting your political power uh, appropriately. You know, it like doesn't healthy, have to be malicious. Yeah. Healthy, considerate, optimistic hostage. That's right. Yeah. I mean, in, in essence, they're the ones being held hostage by the people in the mids and the up top. That's right. Us in the down deep, we're the victims. I mean, a little bit, right? Actually, yeah, totally. If, you know. They've been taken advantage of. Yeah, at least send the maintainers down to clean up their quarters if they're not in good shape. That's right. Like reprioritize resources to the working class. There are all kinds of stuff. Actually, you can do. that makes a lot of sense as well. God, God damn, dude, you're like three for three. <laughs> yeah, get people to take care of their quarters so that way these people and the down deep are just purely just running high efficiency, making sure the silo mm -hmm. is healthy and thriving. That's right. We'll see how this whole hierarchical structure with judicial up top and the mids and down deep and We'll see how this, yeah, I'm so intrigued. We'll see how this plays out as time goes on or as the show goes on. What is the engineer's name? Juliet. 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 She has a temper tantrum and causes a leak. And I thought this leak didn't look easily repaired. Let's take a look. So I was noticing, so there's there's the, the O-ring mm -hmm. and then the bolts are connecting, I guess, I think, what are the these flanges. things? The flange? The mm. flanges are connected. There's an O-ring. They're tightened mm. down. But it mm. doesn't come out of the O-ring. It comes out of this corner. The top of the flange, well, where the pipe and the flange are mated. Are mated, yeah. Which means corrosion or a bad weld or, you know, something. I don't really know how these pipes would be manufactured. But that's probably signs that there's corrosion in many locations and it was so easily broken. She threw one wrench and the whole thing just and it the water pressure isn't even that high. It's not shooting out of there at some high pressure. It's kind of a it's kind of got an arc to it. That's right. Because right. if the water pressure was really high, it would it would rip the pipe apart. That's right. So that so means these pipes are not holding up to a fairly low pressure. That's right. So how you know this this could be indicative of rot in many locations. This is serious. Let's look at that. <laughs> There was a good, good, uh, right here. Look at that's where the leak is coming from. Right in that's there. A bust, that's a busted well. Yeah. To fix this, you gotta, you gotta stop the flow, drain everything out, scrape out any rust, re-weld it. Mm -hmm. And this could be a jump off point for like, hey, we gotta start inspecting all of our pipes. Like yeah. where, it could be a catastrophic failure at some point. It, it's the kind of problem that you don't see from the outside. That's mm -hmm. that's the nasty part. Because from the outside, it just seems to be working. It seems to be pumping, mm -hmm. whatever. But it's like on the inside, it's falling apart. I guess an experienced you know, pipe fitter or maintainer could look at it and be like, I don't know 100% if it's corroded a lot from the inside. But looking at it, it looks like something needs to be replaced or re-welded or something. I think I think if I remember from class, it's, there's nowadays there's like machines that you can use, like you hold up to metal and it'll tell you about the structural integrity and in the inside. Mm -hmm. But that's given our 2023 knowledge of of stuff. I have no idea if these people have it, and I and I suspect they don't, given that they're they're a version of technology. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I have heard that even though those the the non destructive exactly you know measurements of corrosion and stuff do exist in a i think that works when everything's like going smoothly and you have a smooth surface to look at and everything's understood this looks like a fairly old pipe in a crevice or a corner that, you know i think you'd have to get a person in there with like a dink 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 or just looking at it right. with experience to be like mm, this is in bad shape that's right yeah dangerous what's going dangerous. on with the silo 
kind of like it works because it works and it always has but that doesn't last forever and there could be a catastrophic failure in some system at some point that sends the whole place you know into mm. uh something into a crisis mm. ah just a relic so at the top the sheriff the temporary sheriff and and the mayor uh they share a drink but uh, mm, should they day like today i think we get the good stuff comes from before the rebellion maybe before everything okay two things one it's if it's before the rebellion this is a relic this is this is criminal this should be destroyed secondly this then the whole scene she doesn't drink oh really yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. i mean i mean i mean i cut it up like today i think we get the good stuff comes from before the rebellion Okay, she pours it. Maybe she pours everything. two glasses. Corks. He Corks. drinks. He drinks. She doesn't. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I, I mean, I took a snippet of the entire scene. But actually, if you watch the entire scene, she does not drink. What's going on here? Is she get, trying to get him drunk? Hmm. Suspicious. Then she's going to suggest who she wants as the replacement sheriff. Oh, strategic. Political. She also breaks out what is an illegal substance, an illegal Maybe relic. She's, right? And she's, she's testing, testing him. him. Yeah. Because he's a sheriff. He should be like, hey, no, not cool. But instead, she's like, drink? And then she doesn't drink it. But there are a lot of societies everywhere where there's written rules and then there's mm -hmm. the unwritten rules. That's so true. technically, all relics are illegal. But the unwritten rule is some relics are okay, just don't advertise. And maybe this is okay, and so it's not a big deal. But she could also be like, this is super illegal. I'm testing you. Don't you fucking say shit. That's a good point. Because later in the episode, Juliet has a watch, and she's like, it's okay. It's it's passed, or it's certified, mm -hmm. or whatever. It's it's legal. So maybe maybe this uh, this relic juice is okay. Hmm, maybe. Maybe, maybe. Mm -hmm. At the same time, if I'm the mayor, any relics I have, it's okay. Right? <laughs> Since I'm the mayor. <laughs> well, until the the down deep rebels. So I'm like, what the what the what the what the yeah but then i relics. settled down i settled down the rebellion and then i'm like you know what on a days like these we deserve the good stuff i pour it That's out true. to everyone they drink it i don't mm -hmm. drink it but if if the people in the down deep have a particular good day of maintenance and they partake in the a relic juice then judicial will be like get the fuck out of here and get down. crack skulls Son of a bitch. Get down. Where did you even get guns? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is the same meeting. And uh, the mayor is talking about ledgers. They sound important to me. I've been looking through the mayor's ledgers. I'm up to 97. Births, deaths, how much water was used that year, how many computer cables was anyone sent out. So far, not a single instance of a mayor sending a sheriff out to clean. So I was thinking it, it would probably be a good idea to have a historian or a team of historians who really know those ledgers and other historical documents uh, so that any lessons that are in them can be immediately put to use in the silo. Whereas if there's just ledgers on a bookshelf somewhere, like you, you can't, it's not easy. You can't control F it because it's hard copies in fact right. control f it we're not doing this it's too much to read <laughs> yeah. it's too much to read so you need hi historians i mean this is really actually i think really important to have an historian who really knows those documents or team so the mayor can be like hey we have this problem has anybody in the historical archive actually solved it have you encountered um, it before what did they do yeah, they it before. Even, what if, they do? even if people in the past did it wrong you can be you can at least say like uh that's not a good idea we should right, do something different exactly. But it seems like they just have these ledgers sitting on a bookshelf, and as the mayor turnover occurs, nobody reads them. Like what? Can I can I suggest a, an issue here? If if you have a team of historians, those historians have a lot of power in the society because they can now guide the mayor. The mayor is mm -hmm. like, "Hey, we have a problem A," and then they're like, mm -hmm. mm, "We're going to tell them something else." But by mm -hmm. keeping all these books to the mayor, the mayor consolidates power for themselves. That's true. And I think this does happen in societies in you know the in the real world, where the on on the surface like the mayor or the strongman has a power, 
but there's a council of advisors and bodyguards and stuff that hang around enough that they understand what happens and then they take power. In fact, it can be the origin of a council. Yeah. Um, and like puppet leaders and yeah. So, but if, at the same time, I mean, if I was president, I can't know everything. I need to have a council of people who are experts and they'll advise me. And yeah, I'm the president. I'll make the final decision, but I'm going to listen to them and really honor what they say because they're experts in this. So the question is, do I trust them? Well, it's like a presidential cabinet today in say in the United States, we have presidential cabinet. The power for the president comes from the vote and the cabinet members can't take it over because they would have to get the vote to have legitimate power in the minds of everybody. Mm -hmm. So how what? does the mayor exert, why does, why, do the, why does the society in the silo believe the mayor has power? Where does that legitimacy come from? It's not a vote, is it? Is it? I, don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We'll find out. I was going to say, I'm guessing that they just hand it down, considering that's how they do sheriffs. Like the sheriff's like, I trust this person, hand it down. I'm guessing they do the same thing to mayor. I have no idea. I have no but idea. So the mayor chooses the sheriff, and that's a power that the mayor has to choose the next sheriff. Okay. But then that would there's nobody above the mayor. Maybe judicial gets together in some kind of group and votes on the next one. Like a prime minister. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. We need a we need some more episodes we'll to find some more out. episodes. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't think we learned um I think we know her name. Juliet's sort of mentor's name. But man, she has this cool workshop. Take a look at this. I see a speaker. So that's probably her radio. I see a soldering iron. Mm -hmm. I see a, uh, a drill press right here. Mm -hmm. All kinds of stuff on the shelf here that probably in several states of repair. Mm -hmm. Is this a clamp? Like those, those nice solid ones? Uh, a vice. Yeah. A vice. You know, that's what I meant. Grab vice. something yeah. tight when you work on it. Yeah. yeah so a nice vice here. Another, another vice, vice yeah. here. Yeah. Uh, all kinds of tools. So cool. I saw in the back, in that back room. Can you look? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little yeah. bit to the right there. Yeah, perfect. That looks like a medical curtain. You yeah. know, the things like like run around mm -hmm. you so you have a little privacy. That, I don't understand why you would have that in a workshop. I mean, it could be that this is a reconfigured space that used to be sort of a doctor's office that is converted now to a workshop. Oh, boy. What happened to the doctors? <laughs> where, where are they working? Well, oh. they did have the purge, and maybe they we said maybe they don't want super educated people, and so right. all the doctors were. <laughs> maybe the maybe this is too maybe this is down deep, and all the doctors are still there, but they went up to the top. Interesting. Which I guess in the past means every layer of the silo had support staff like doctors to support the workers, Makes but sense. now it's become. Stratified. Doctors, right? Doctors have become so rare that they only are at the up top, and people in the down deep don't get anything. Oof. I mean, so I they, mean, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, I guess that's how I, when I do like remember Sim Tower back in the day, like like you were building a mm -hmm. tower and you'd have to put like food and and bathrooms and medical stuff like mm -hmm. mixed throughout because otherwise if someone in the down deep gets injured you're like walking ninety seven floors up to go see a doctor like no no no, no that's <laughs> not gonna happen you gotta spread them out. Right. So what does that mean? Need more episodes. Not sure. Curious. Juliet. Juliet runs down to the down deep to the base here to where the pumps are. And she there's this like one nut that every time like they need to show her doing stuff, she like she turns this one nut. It's gotta be like the most important nut like in the entire place. You're talking about this down here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, let's watch. I mean, it's like closed off behind this heavy door. It's all red and stuff in there. So like there's some, some hot, some steamy going on there. And it's like this one nut that she turns. Like, I wonder what that is. Like, and imagine, imagine if that broke. Imagine if she like bust that nut, like would that entire silo like crumble? Like what, what is that nut? Super critical. I mean, it kind of felt like a switch. Like she, it's like an on off switch. So she could like turn it off or turn on something. Okay. But why would it need such high leverage? You know, she really has to work that nut to get it to turn on. With like that huge wrench. She like, it couldn't just be like with her hand. She had to have to get a tool to, to work it. 
She had to have like a device. I mean, we said maybe it's nuclear, you know? So, Could but be. maybe not. Why is it orange in there? It's like Why a is it orange in there? Like a sauna. <laughs> You'd be nuts if that actually was the, was actually just a sauna. <laughs> it's like the most critical sauna nut in there. <laughs> no, I mean, the no way down deep. Be. Like, no, it's important. No, it's actually a sauna. <laughs> no way. Look how like metal this is with this hatchway door that's circular. You know, you know what I would do if I didn't want people to know about my underground sauna? <laughs> I'd make it look like it was structurally like important, like mechanically important. <laughs> it's and, then, and then, and then the engineers in the in the old days converted this absurd sauna into some kind of power infrastructure. Oh, you know what? No, no, it makes more sense the other way. It was already a power structure, and they're like, "Hey, let's get a two for one out of this. Let's a little a little bit of water in there. It's hot already. We make it a steam room. We chill out here." While we steam, we steam down here while everyone else is upstairs, like looking down on us. Yeah. Now, now that now that you say it's actually not ridiculous. If they're doing power generation in this down deep area and they need hot water to be supplied to the entire silo, well, they could do it through heat exchangers on the silo, and then you could make a makeshift sauna inside the power system that people could actually go into. That's super smart. That's super smart. B or B going to Hoover Dam gonna turn into a sauna. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, with the Hoover, the Hoover Dam doesn't, it, it's by um, Hydro water turning so, turbines. I guess nothing yeah. really heats up. It, but if it was like coal fire or nuclear, there would be uh, steam, which then you could feed into heat exchangers to heat up True. water that supplies the silo. I guess, I guess the steam is what you use to turn the turbines mm -hmm. in, that, in, a, in a hydro, like I guess in a, in a, nuclear or coal powered right. plant and you could just siphon some of that off to steam well i think the steam in a coal fire power plant that turns the turbines or in a nuclear power plant has to be a closed system because it's under extreme pressure yeah working and hard i think if you wanted heat to a separate liquid like water that would be fed somewhere else. You do it through a heat exchanger instead of siphoning off actual steam, I think. Oh, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. Yeah, because the water that interacts with, say, let's say the nuclear fuel, fuel rods, mm -hmm. um, you want that to be isolated because it does get irradiated. Mm -hmm. But you could put it through a tube that's connected to a wall that has another pipe, and then that pipe, that can freely flow around with whatever mm -hmm. water you need it to go. Yeah. And so so you're saying that that division, that, that's a heat exchanger. Uh, right, exactly. Huh? Okay, okay. Yeah. So it sounds like we've just confirmed that this is like a power plant plus steam room. Must be. I, I mean, she's she's confirmed. down here dirty all, every day, but her skin looks so nice. It's got to be a steam room. Got to be a steam room. I mean, actually. So Wilkins jumped from up top and fell to his death. Um, and they're exploring the crime scene. Uh, and I was, you know, so they've got these Mario pipes here. <laughs> you know? I see them now. First off, I didn't why, why are there so many of them? But I was also noting like, there's like a heater AC unit here, a heater and AC unit here. Um, heater and AC units, a good one might last 20, 30 years. All right. These are 250 years old, unless they're manufacturing new units. Is that realistic to be some, manufacturing something so complex? Or are they just all broken and they don't use them? They just haven't removed them? There's <laughs> cosmetic now. <laughs> um, yeah, or, or I guess also possibly they are like the lights in the tunnel where whoever the, the founders that were building the silo were like we need these things to last we don't know how long so just the absolute highest quality components and manufacturing processes i mean for uh, lights maybe. lights are significantly simpler Simpl and many fewer moving parts i mean no moving parts in lights whereas this has got a fan and and, and switches I guess, and i guess the most likely to break down is the compressor. So compressor, something that yeah. requires you, you like you have to compress gas in order to heat it up, then you get rid of the heat. Now you and now you get cold mm -hmm. gas. That's how AC works. Uh, short, short and sweet of it. Mm -hmm. So like there's a part that has to rotate, and then that rotation, um, there's going to be wear. Yeah. So so right. yeah, and there's like there. bearings and O rings and wary downy mm -hmm. things. Wary wary downy things. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so. And plus, I mean, looking at these lights here, I'm seeing some grime. Mm. Mm. Is th this is not indicative of like maintenance. 
right? You know, this is suggestive of there's oil in the air that's settling down and then collecting dust, they're collecting dust and stuff, mm. which means how well, if they can't maintain the light covers, how well are they maintaining, which, yeah, like the radiators, these, the fins. Yeah. They must, they must be broken and not usable anymore, but I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they're running at like 2% efficiency. <laughs> Might as well not be on. Yeah. <laughs> they just have such a surplus of power. Fuck it. We're running it. Fuck it. Run it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. At this point in time, it's Sheriff. Mm, oh, shoot. What's his name? What's... Holstein. Holstein. Holstein is a sheriff. And and he he's just social skills are terrible here. Like, why? <laughs> what's, 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 Wait, why? Is it? Hold on a second. Is it Holstein or is it Holsten? Holsten. Let's take a look. Uh, Holston. 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 So okay, Holston. 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 Sheriff Holston. He's talking with with uh, Juliet, and she, he's just he just shuts her down so hard. <laughs> it's amazing. Nice watch. Is that a relic? Uh, it's it's legal. Nice. She's like trying to talk with him and he's like looking off somewhere else. And she like, is, he's like, is that cool? What is it like? And she's like explaining to him. He's like, yeah, it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> and, she, and you see in her face, she's like, Ugh. <laughs> it's so hard to talk to him. <laughs> I interpreted this as he is a cop. He's a sheriff and he needs to know some information because uh, his wife was involved and because there's a crime. So he put some emotional pressure on her by being like oh aloof or whatever and so she, that made her tense and so she could slip up and sh reveal something she didn't want to he's doing cop things where they like mm -hmm. they like manipulate the social situation to put you under mm -hmm. pressure to get you to slip okay okay mm -hmm. okay i see you holston that's clever okay fine mm -hmm. <laughs> but also what is she doing wearing something so blingy let's see if i can find bling, so bling. blingy that could be a relic i mean people would notice right why advertise that i mean even according to today's fashion standards that's oversized for her wrist <laughs> it's it's, sure. it's very attention getting and it would be especially attention getting then because if watch if very few people have watches mm -hmm. and she's got this blingy big face bling watch bling. yeah you know people are like what the that's i don't right. know she could keep just she could and also she's like an engineer she's working in that steamy room mm -hmm. right you just put it in your pocket Pull it out when you need it. That's right. That's right. Don't don't get it all banged up. Right. And I guess it's a nice thing that she got from Wilkins. Mm -hmm. So I guess stored in your quarters, but wearing it. Oh my gosh. Put it in your put it put it on a necklace on your shirt. It'll keep it close to your heart. That's sweet. So this next clip, I I'm not surprised that they use the 24 hour cycle, which is circadian rhythm, in the silo. Not surprised. However, I was surprised that they stuck to a day-night cycle. Like day, everybody's awake, night, everybody's asleep. I mean, you could do 12 on, 12 off, and you could stagger it. Or, or you could do classic, eights. Yep, the classic eights. Um, or you could do three shifts of eight in a 24-hour period where people are sleeping at different times. I mean, why have a day-night <gasps> cycle for the whole society if there's no sun to dictate that? So let's, let's watch. He died 3 a.m. No one's on the stairs then, right? Unless you're a porter. So, yeah. He so died she says. 3 a.m. No one's on the stairs. No one's on the stairs, implying that at 3 a.m. the place is shut down. But why would it be shut down? There's no sun, there's no nighttime. Yeah, they have lights running all the time. Like, I mean, I mean, yes, there is a sun outside, but that only comes in through the video feed. Everything right. is, is always eliminated by internal lights. So they could time those whenever they wanted. And so there's really no reason for them to have to be connected to like the sun cycle at all. Um, they, they honest, honestly, honestly, what I think they should, they should do like nine hour shifts where one hour is a required nap in the middle. I mean, that'd be, that'd be amazing. Um, but yeah, yeah. They should have rotating shifts, just hustling, bustling all day. I don't see why not. Right. I mean, I guess they could do a more busy time and a less busy time or something but there's really i mean they're still adhering to this nighttime daytime 24-hour cycle after 250 years i yeah, have no a hard time you. believing that no thank you but maybe i don't know or maybe it's just the people up top that get to have that nice cozy that day nice cycle people yeah. down below you might be working all the time work, work all the time the silo never time. shuts down do i do i hear worker noise down down in the down i better be 
send judicial to get you. I don't hear it because it's nighttime for me. I said I'd take a nap. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Holston and Juliet are down in the deep, deep down, I guess we'll call it. Deep, like, but deep, deep. They're down below the silo and they're find they find this drill that that the founders made and they're climbing down and it's just it's just like the most dangerous thing like there's no safety railings there's no like even like like bars you hook a clip onto like the founders did not give a fuck about safety let's watch it's better not to look down There, there's, there's no like cage around them that stops them from falling. You know, like you look at like power lines. You know, there's like a ladder and a cage that holds people in, and they don't have. There's not even like a bar next to them where they would hook in their clips and they're wearing like a harness. Like they're just, they're just grip strength going all the way down this. The founders, like, they were like build this place. Like we don't care about people dying. Like just, just fucking make it. You know, I interpreted this as the ladder is in dilapidated shape and there probably was safety mechanisms there. Um, they have since fallen down into disrepair or something. <laughs> the safety mechanisms and, were poor, so poorly constructed that they were the first to go. <laughs> I mean, they could have been temporary safety mechanisms. And then once, you know, once it, the, the hole was built, they just left everything since the safety mechanisms were, ter were temporary, but the ladder was permanent, the safety mechanism fell first. I mean, that feels like a, like an actual job site where they're like, safety inspectors coming in Tuesday, like, all right, let's build something. <laughs> safety inspectors gone, like, all right, take it down. Wait, on a real job site, they would always keep it up. Wouldn't they? Any Anytime the safety yeah. inspectors are gone. I guess it depends on the legitimacy of the real job site. Like, if they're being serious about it, they should be mindful of safety at all times, which means keep the safety around all the time. But some places, some shadier people, like, they just do the bare minimum, you know? Don't really care. So this is uh, Juliet leading Holston down to the bowels. And he's like, where are we going? And they have this sign that says, do not proceed beyond this point. It is punishable. It is a punishable violation of the pact. With this cool symbol of this guy. Oh, it's a person with a cross out yeah. symbol. With a cross out symbol, sure. No Danger people. to proceed further is punishable is a punishable violation of the pact. So it's not actually obvious there's a hole here, but Al, uh, Juliet takes the sign away, and there's actually a hole here that mm. goes down into the the depths. Is this sign adequate to stop somebody from violating the pact? <laughs> I mean, apparently not, because people walk past it. I mean, did they forget about this, maybe? It was put up as a serious thing, and it was patrolled, but now it's, like, so far down there that people have forgotten that I think that's right. there. I think that's right. It's like, like, back in the day, there was some reason to go down there, but then things are running well, so they're just like, whatever, who cares? And then the rebellion happened, and then they created the pact, and then they put the sign up, and then it was serious, don't go down there. And then over this 150 years of time it's been forgotten i think so okay except for like a few people that happen to be like very curious and wander around mm -hmm. which means there could be multiple of these places that we're not supposed to proceed through that are just sort of out in the open maybe there might even be multiple people that know about this one it's just they don't go down there at the same time mm -hmm. and i assumed that juliet knew about it because she's an engineer and like understands the infrastructure better than somebody else Oh, my understanding was that she had that George had explored around, and then since they were they were lovers, that he had brought her down there at one point in time. So George is the problem. George is the problem. He He's has been problem. eliminated. I mean, if that's what it takes to secure societal stability, you know, give him a shove off the top. Okay, Stalin. Jesus. I'm not Stalin. <laughs> I'm a law and order guy. That's right. <laughs> Okay, Stalin, Jesus. I mean, if you had to choose between the silo society collapsing and everybody dying versus one man, easy choice. Ooh, I mean, yeah, I get it. Because silo society, their impression is that they are the last bastion of humanity. So if you have one person that's threatening to take everyone down, this is your last chance for humanity. You can kind of do what you got to do. You got to do what you got to do. Now, how would you ever know that he would make society fall apart like that? You probably wouldn't. So it's probably not justified by lack of yeah. information. But if you knew right. that he was going to cause the collapse of society, it's worth it. But you probably don't know. Anyway, Wilkins, George Wilkins. 
He's the problem. He's the problem. Maybe he's not actually dead. So this is the place that, so George, I guess, went down into, through that sign, down past the driller, the huge machine, and made this like little alcove to bring his girlfriends down to. This is his bachelor pad, yep. Yep. I mean, pretty isolated. Hope nobody mm -hmm. else got the same idea, but it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. It's got a nice view. Nice little cozy private place. Yeah. Thank you. It's pretty cool. I mean, what is he? He actually has a decent amount of stuff down here. He has a shelf, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. stuff on it. Hard to say. Working oh, yeah, that's lights. right. He was a, um, a relic dealer. He would like black mm -hmm. market stuff. Maybe this is a place he could come and pick up relics. Exactly. I think he like scrounged them down here and he would store them here and then release them out to the public little bits at a time. Hmm, that's a good place too. To... Hmm. It's also very it's video gamey. <laughs> like, I gotta go exploring. Oh, there's a little place with loot. I mean, <laughs> if we were to go into the forest and find a little place with loot, we would, <laughs> it would be video gamey. I would totally do it. Yeah. yeah, totally. If there was ever a door anywhere, I'd put a little loot right behind the door and no one's going to check there. No, everybody's going to check there. You always check behind the doors. I'll always check behind the doors. I mean, in real life, there'd be an, you know, you're not always going to check the real, the, all the doors because there's so many doors. In a video game, they'll be like, the door that looks like it should have loot in it, you open it. The other door yeah. that's pre rendered, you can't open it. It's obvious. Pre rendered, the colors are all the same. <laughs> no, no door. That door doesn't work. It doesn't work. Sli <laughs> slightly more orange. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Check it. Check it. Oh, you need to find a key? It's probably somewhere around the room. <laughs> Oh, yeah. So this is Juliet and Holston going down to um, Wilkin, George Wilkins' hideout. I noticed exposed rebar. So this thing was made that. of concrete. And rebar, to me, means this is structural concrete. If it's non-structural concrete, I don't know if you put rebar in it. You put rebar in it to pre-stress the rebar and pre so pre-stress the concrete. And the rebar is a unit. And then that can hold compression. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as I understand, when the, the concrete starts to chip away, you can get water inclusion into the rebar, which completely degrades the steel rebar through oh. corrosion. And it will no longer hold when that corruption takes hold. So this, if this is truly structural, because there's rebar there, this could indicate some real problems. Real, like, substantial and like, structural integrity problems with the silo. Yep. And mm -hmm. there was an earlier part in the episode where we saw that as well, where we've got this concrete pillar, and there's definite rebar inside, and it's exposed. So water can get in and siphon its way up and down and corrode the rebar, which degrades the structural integrity of the, the mm -hmm. pillar, which means and this could be on, like, its last legs that's ready to go at any point in time. That's right. Maybe floor 32 out of 200, whatever, mm -hmm. crumbles. Then it's just crunch, 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 crunch all the way down. Right. And and that rebar is not even straight anymore. Like it, it should be similar in structure of whatever that pillar is supposed to be, but it, right. it's all yeah. warped and damaged. I guess, I guess that means that this pillar is no longer holding a load. And so the stresses have been offloaded to other pillars that are still have structural integrity, which means... Mm -hmm. If this is an isolated one, maybe it's okay. But if multiple pillars are having structural problems and it's offloading their structure onto other pillars, at some point, something's going to fail. We can get a real leaning tower of underground pizza problem. Well, that's... Could... Wait. The silo itself would not lean. <laughs> right? Because <laughs> it's a hole. But yeah. maybe the... The, uh, floors, floors internally start could, tipping could be tippy so there's tipping yeah, yeah, yeah. tower of pizza maybe <laughs> Un underground all of it on, all of it underground well <laughs> <of> <laughs> oh, i guess i guess yeah 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 so if you get a four collapse then you could also get w like wall collapses and then dirt just fills in and now you got people like landslide underneath hmm. this could be ooh, ooh. 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 more engineers so these are the this is how Juliet turns on the lights. There are mm -hmm, these three mm -hmm. big beefy levers. Kachunk. Kachunk. Are these three levers were they made just for the lights? 
I think so. Because she 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 actuates them and it's like lights turn on. I think that's what these are for. But doesn't this look like like a foreman station where it's like controls right. to control power, oh, I guess. And he's like right. the only power the foreman has, I can turn the lights on and off. That's, it. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, that's right. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, yeah. Because if it's just lights, that can be a button. It doesn't need to be this like big, like mm-hmm. like throwing this this um electrical connection thing. So maybe this is much more substantial in the circuitry. It's like it's like the foreman's like, oh, there's something bad going in there. He could throw the switch, throw that mm-hmm. throw that fat lever, and then disconnect all the power. And maybe it's like it's like like on the wall switch, you know, like you like press on off on the wall and then it turns on the outlet. And so you just have to leave the lamp on all the time. Maybe it's like that, like somewhere in their circuits, they have all the lights just left on. And then and then here they've forgotten where the buttons are. So they just throw the whole they throw the whole circuit, turn everything on. I think that that's got to be the explanation. So it was hooked up to everything and now it's just hooked up to lights. So throwing these huge circuits. switches. <laughs> To turn on some light bulbs. Yeah. I mean, it work. For sure. Hmm. Here's the machine. So creepy. So creepy. It looks like a spider. Yeah, a spider. I would have ma- I would have imagined it would be the bore would be the size of the hole with little bits attached to it. Mm. Not this like spiny thing. But mm-hmm. I don't understand how drilling works. Giant bore sounds like a boring design. I like these little spidey boy, spidey boy legs in terms of like fantasy, fantasy boring. So it can be like drilling. It's like, yeah. Okay. And then the pressure for the drill is applied by these hydraulics. That's terrible. That's right. Not, not by the weight of the drill press or drill bit or body stuff above it. Yeah. That's right. You got a very good point there because those, those pneumatics, they're very good for like actuating. You want to drill something here or there. You can like move the arm around. However, that also means that they are supplying the downforce to grind mm-hmm. the the metal, the grind the rock. Um, really, what you should just use is the weight of the thing. Hmm. Right, and I'm looking at some torques here. So these hydraulics here are responsible for lifting the whole arm up. Mm-hmm. This one is responsible, I guess, for pushing this three section down what's responsible for pushing the arm outward to force it down i don't see it must be inside the shoulder joint i'm going to call it i guess so hard to see or maybe there were hydraulics attached here that that push outward to push this Mm. down Mm. but they're not there anymore interesting design i don't really understand it but I guess the cool thing about this is that you are not limited to a circle. You can carve out whatever shape you need. Just change the radius of the arms. Maybe they needed that because they they drill the circular hole, but then they need the arms to come in and drill the housing. Hmm. Could be. So you get down to a certain level. Maybe the actual drill is actually in the water that drilled the actual hole. Oh. And these guys come up and drill the how the the rooms. Yeah, and I guess also if you have a drill that exactly fits your hole, you can. If there's a problem at the front, you can never get to it. So you need these arms on the outside. Maybe, maybe that's what it is. The arms on the outsides drill the area around so that you can service the main drill. The main drill is what's really getting you down. Mm. So these, these are like guys are more like follow-ups. Follow-up drills. Yeah. Okay. 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 Founders. All right. You know what's going on. Okay. Also, those switches turned on all of these lights. So many all lights. Of- all the lights. All of the lights are on. <laughs> High quality construction. The lights will last forever. In the previous episode, we saw, uh, I guess it was Allison handling this 150-year-old hard drive, at least 150-year-old hard drive, mm-hmm. with slam, slam. Yeah. And they're a little cavalier with this hard drive. Let's take a look. Let's take a watch. You never mentioned this. No. I mean, a, a new hard drive you could handle like that. It's not probably not going to break. But a 150-year-old hard drive with all those little delicate components, you're just flipping it around and place it, you know, putting it down on a shelf. Not to mention, you put it down cavalier on a shelf, it accidentally slips, and oh, gone forever. Yep. 
Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> not not just not just gone forever. Like it hits the ground and now it can't spin properly. It's like you're on the edge of a cliff. It's like gone in the water forever. Like that's right. No way you're gonna find that. No way. The slowest hard drive that I'm familiar with, at least commercially available nowadays, it's 4,500 RPM or revolutions per minute. So mm-hmm. every minute this thing's spun around or almost 6,000 mm-hmm. times. Like that's some precision stuff. It's got to be real accurate, finely tuned. Be careful with it. Right. But I guess and they don't know what's in it anymore. Like they've lost but, track of. But they did recognize it as a hard drive. Hmm. Um, and they know it's electronics that are delicate. Not aware that things can break. I don't know. Or maybe they just interact with dead hard drives all the time. They just throw them around, no problem. So I just think this is a dead hard drive. Uh, cause, yeah, because if it's dead, who cares anyway? Like Who cares, yeah. It's right. junk. Junk. Hmm. Let's watch it one more time. Oof. Oof. You never mentioned this. Oof. No. Like, flipping it like a deck of cards. I mean, it's not on, which is good, but like... Be careful with it. Just it's, be just, careful yeah. with it. it's old too. It's old. That's mm-hmm. the big thing. It's 150 years old. So at least at least 150 years old. It could be 250 years old if it was made before the silo. Right. I don't know if they could manufacture really complex oh, man. electronics like this prior to 150 years ago, but after 250 years ago when the silo opened. I think they must have some other tech tree than us. Because for us, like the stability of the bits of the magnetic recording bits, it's I think it's 10 or 15 years. Like if you're not reading and writing the bits, they destabilize over time. So this this right. thing's data should be all messed up anyway. So let's assume that what ten or fifteen years is the half life of the bits. Mm. So half of them have been randomized after fifteen years. So we're talking one hundred and fifty years. That's ten half lives. Ten I mean, half lives. That's like a percent of the bits are left unrandomized. So unreadable, right? Right. right. So I think you're so right. May- it has to be a different check tree. Right. So in their universe, they figured out how to get around that. We haven't, but maybe they have. Okay, and, sure. And the hard drives are robust, so they know they can handle, the, you know, move them around. Blam! Data! Blam! It doesn't, it's not going to break <laughs> it. So, interesting. Yeah. Okay. Hey, I mean, their tech beats ours, then, actually. Absolutely, yeah. So, oh, yeah, this is Juliet leaving her mentor's very cool workshop. Notice this board over here. Looks like we got an item, a toaster with a mm-hmm. tag number and a contact number, probably for who's repairing it right Oh, now. so maybe that's like a or contact. I thought contact was like the person that brought it in. So that's person living on 100 Ooh. floor 113, room number 54. Oh, I see. That, that makes more sense. Because if everything on this list is being repaired in this room, then if you need to contact the, the owner, this would be... How do, I, how do I get it back to you? Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Or if there's an issue, how do I ask a question? I could be. Sure. I like that. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So we got toaster, heater, fan. I think that's unreadable. Computer, toaster, sewing machine, coffee, probably coffee, coffee maker. Coffee machine? Yeah, yeah. L-E-M-T-A. I don't know what that is. I don't know. Joanne. Toaster. No, that's that toaster? toaster. That's, that's toaster? toaster. That's toaster. toaster. Okay. Light. Light. Unreadable, I think. Ver... I don't know. Unreadable, I think. I assume that those are both some other versions of toasters. Because a lot of toasters are going bad here. <laughs> I mean, that could make sense. People need to toast things to heat them up. Would you Maybe let people have stove. toasters in their bedrooms? Or is it like strictly in the cafeteria? But I think each some a lot of people had kitchens. Ooh, that's and dangerous. We, yeah. I mean, of course, I want my own kitchen. I don't want I'm not gonna mess it up. <laughs> but like <laughs> Other people are going to, like, that's a fire hazard. But we have toasters today. How often do toasters cause that's a good point. fires? Yeah, you pretty you really have to try to, like, make a toaster burn a place down. But they, I really like, like They automatically this. turn themselves off. I mean, right, that's right, yeah. It's overload, about as safe as yeah. it gets. That's right. And if, I guess if the wires melt, it just, you know, circuit's broken. Circuit's broken, yeah. I just like that. You know, they're actually, they've got they've some competence here. They're tracking what things are being maintained, who to contact. They keep track of tag numbers. So they have some sort of inventory system for what's out mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. So that's important. Yeah, it's just, it's, I like it. They are It'd doing fun. some good maintenance. It'd be super funny if like the tag numbers were just gigantic strings. Cause like the silo has <laughs> been around for 200 something years. Like somebody was the first item, but like by now we're like, 
three billion items <laughs> repaired. Like just gigantic numbers. I don't know. This is what the last seven. That's right. Last seven of the I, I, I guess you don't you need, need that many. Yeah, you can you can yeah. revolve them and restart right. the numbers. Or even if it is this huge number for maintenance purposes, just take give me the last seven. That's good enough. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Last seven means that they have they have ten million jobs possible. Or hundred million. million inventory items out there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, I see. Hmm. This I was like this is where I was starting to feel the darkness. Julia is down under the drill. There's all these precarious beams and fall hazards and trip things and it's corroded and it's just even with the lights on it's just not a lot of light down there if something were to happen all the lights went off for some reason because of some fault you're not just in darkness what's her backup does she know how to get back i just would be in constant fear of the lights going out that i would be there'd be backups upon backups upon backups for me i would tie a rope to the ladder and untie that to me (laughs) like but even still, you like she looks like she's walking on I beams, so like very possible to slip off and fall. Like mm. Mm, this is scary. And and then like this, you've got these little, um, I guess these are bolts or screws that have been screwed up that attach to something that got detached. Um, now these massive trip hazards here. If you didn't see them, down you go. Yeah, I mean, not only do you trip on them, but say you tripped on something else about five feet away. Now it's like plunging to your neck. Ooh, right. no thank you. This is, this is super dangerous. And there's these lippy things right here. Lippy things. Right? You don't, it looks flat and then you walk in and then, uh, and now you're dead because right. you fell into the water below. Which means you have to like shuffle step everywhere so you like gently touch it with your front foot. Right? And this is all happening in extremely low light. So if your eyes adjust. super bright, you can you could see things clearly and maybe you don't trip. But in low light, not, every, not all the contours and contrasts make are easily seen your eyes are just a dim light but there's some point where the photons are just too few for you to see anything mm-hmm. just is, is this is this dim or is this dark i think this is dark mm-hmm. i mean even if i'm say i need to go to the bathroom at night you know and the lights are off in the mm-hmm. house mm-hmm. and i'm walking around and there's something on the floor maybe i have the capability to see it if i'm looking right at it but if i'm looking at something else I don't see, I trip over it. But if it was super bright, my, my eyes would see it immediately. So just having low light, even if something you can see it, maybe it doesn't register. You know? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I got scared. Yeah. Scare bear. Because George Wilkins said he found something in the water that she never got to learn what it was, she decided to go find this thing herself. Now, the way she does this is she... It's going to climb a rope down into the water and go find it. Uh, I was upset at her because I wanted her to, let's do like a couple months of prep. Learn to climb <laughs> rope, learn how to secure yeah. a rope, learn how to swim, learn kinds of backups and how to backups for flashlights and all kinds of things so that you're really prepared to do this. This is a really dangerous situation. Uh-uh. She's going to wing it. Wing it. Let's see. Never done this before. Never done this before. Kind of secured rope. She she like looped it over the the, the studs. She didn't like tie it. <laughs> right. Let's see that again. Right here. So there's these. Not really permanent. It looks like they've been sheared off. Mm-hmm. Um, studs. They're maybe like four or five inches tall. I thought what what could happen like you throw down this rope and it goes down and it whips it whips on the bottom and so there's an energy reflection that comes up mm-hmm. that could be enough to just flip those off of the stud flip, flip, flip the rope off the studs and then you've that's lost right. your rope that's right and plus if she's hanging from it and something happens probably not going to whip off the studs but it doesn't look as secure as I'd like yeah if I'm basically trusting my life to these two here in fact, I mean, they at least be corroded enough to break they already have tie broken. it to the i-beam and cinch it learn a knot right i mean i don't know which knot it is i'm not a, i'm not a i'm not a i um cub scout boy scout man scout i'm not i'm not a, none of those but like there are some knots that are really secure right so you have to if that's another thing you can do scout out where you're going to hang the rope from this <gasps> These these bolts have been sheared off at least once. 
Mm -hmm. So what is the internals like? It could shear off again under body weight. I don't know. I would also have liked it if she had looked around the room for maybe there's a ladder. <laughs> like she's, she like found a rope and she's like, well, this is my solution. Here we go. <laughs> we send in it. Like, yeah. That is so like, true. Do a complete survey of the place and make sure there isn't an easier way down. Okay. She could have like, she could have like tied this, the rope onto something else and like repelled down instead of like a straight up, just a rope climb. <laughs> like mm -hmm. at least put your feet on the wall. So she could, this to me is a month's, at least month's prep. Months and months of prep. She a badass. She's gonna, she's gonna, she's gonna do it. Yes, Send she's it. Gonna do it. I mean, and I was like, that headlamp's gonna fall off. That headlamp's gonna fall off, and it did fall off. That's right, right. She needs a piece of string and to tie that to her shirt. That's right. That would That's do it. That would fix it. Yeah. yeah. And then, does it look like she's using good rope technique? I don't know how to climb a rope. But she got a lot of arm use there. A lot of arm use, right? She should be like just so from what I've seen from like watching like YouTube people like climb ropes, mm -hmm. like to go down, you need to like sandwich the rope between your feet and then you just mm -hmm. glide down, you just slide down. She shouldn't be struggling right. so much. I'm not a right. rope expert. I'm not, I'm, I'm not a rope expert, but she would need to learn how to, she needs to be under pressure ability to go down the rope quickly, ability to go up the rope quickly, right? In darkness too, just in case. So. There's a lot of training I think she needs to do for it. But no, she's going to just do it. She's going to do it. Oh, no. That's gone forever. Wait, you, you have a few seconds. Chase it. You can get it before it hits the bottom. <laughs> I don't know what's in that water. Or if it even is like an acid or what. who knows what. Who knows? What is in that water? I have no idea. That's right. <laughs> Although it's super hard to see, I don't. I mean, if if you want to like go watch the episode, the rope barely touches the water. Like mm -hmm. like it like flicks across the surface of the water. So that means like like she is a few maybe a foot two feet off from never being able to reach that rope. Because like like synchronized swimmers are very good at getting their torsos above the water and and also like water polo players, but that's still like torso above the water. Mm -hmm. So that means like three feet, maybe four or five, you reach your arm up. But if it was any, if the rope was any shorter, she would be stuck there forever. Like you're, you're in the water, you can't possibly reach it. High risk maneuver. That also means she, she has to be able to climb the rope with wet hands and clothes, which mm -hmm. probably adds mm -hmm. what? How much? Another 15 pounds? I don't know how much water would weigh in your clothes, but it's heavy. It's not. Plus, you've got the your grip strength with the water is going to be slip slidey, depending yep. on how oily the rope is. Oof! 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 And like her hand blisters and like you, you got to take a break somehow like oof a lot of things to think about now she's stuck this is the end of the episode this this is the end of the entire series she gets stuck there. <laughs> she's stuck she just dies of thirst <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right she doesn't drink water at the water what do you mean she dies of thirst well i mean would you drink that water i guess if you had no choice you have to but there's all these like machines sitting in it. It's got to be super dirty. I wonder though if it's been sitting with these machinery around and if it really is truly st sitting water. Maybe there's an oil surface and then down below actually clean water. And then like all the fine particulate settles down to the bottom if it's I mean that's that's distilled water, right? That's right. You're right. If it's been sitting there for 250 years, all those fine particles would have had 250 years to accumulate at the bottom, leaving pure water behind. I guess assuming nothing's in solution, but at right. least the particulates would be gone. And you'd probably get an oil layer on top because the oil's less dense in the water. But if you just shoved your face underneath that, then okay. Okay. So she's going to die of starvation. That's right. Okay. <laughs> on board. She's dying of starvation. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> so so overall the big problem here is she didn't bring snacks <laughs> bring snacks that's right bring snacks. actually that's another thing she has to do is she has to create a pack of things that's watertight that she can take with her so there's a lot of prep and training that she oh, needs man. to do before she did this and ah oh. she had a if she had a watertight bag she can keep her snacks her clothing in there her extra flashlight and it doubles as a flotation device that's right. Yeah. Get a dry bag. Dry bags are awesome. That's right. So probably she would want at least two, maybe three of those mm -hmm. bags. Mm -hmm. And like a raft too. 
maybe a little submarine. Actually, that's actually, I mean, I can, okay, maybe no submarine. I mean, it's too difficult. But you could maybe a little drone, helicopter. You could you could make some kind of device that floats, yeah. push it off, or or lower it down into the water, and then when you climb, you go down the rope, you could get onto the raft, that's and right. then move maneuver around. Um, and you could make and that out of wood, maybe. Or, or something That's right. pontoons and, and you you put a little loopy on loopy boy on it and attach it to the rope so that way it holds onto the rope as it goes down and it stays there so all you got to do is go down the rope and you're automatically in the canoe right and you don't heck have to yeah. get into the water heck yeah heck yeah and you, you can explore around on top of the water and see mm-hmm, what's going mm-hmm, on mm-hmm. a lot of prep you could do god damn how do we get in the silo we should be in there we should be in there, we should be in there. I, i'm actually really curious though i think she's going to find the tunnel somehow I want to see what's inside. We'll see on episode three. Yeah, let's see. Hang tight. Mm-hmm. So that was the end of the episode. What will Juliet find in the deep down below the tunnel? Right, got to find the tunnel. I guess. I hope so. I hope she finds the tunnel. I'm curious. And what did George find? Why did he have to die? Was it common? He's common? Did common see common. him? And he's like, you got to die. Fucking you, you found something I don't like. You got to die. Does that mean judicial knows about the tunnel? under the water and they just keep it secret because they don't want people to know i mean maybe, maybe. Hmm. and where is allison's body that's right when we saw the feed from the outside her body was clearly dead like, on like, like the, the hillside but before the tree saw, before the tree and what well, from holston's view there was no body so is she okay was there a feed coming in from the camera that simulated the body it has we'll to be see. a lie has to be a lie Fuck next time on silo episode nope that's wrong <laughs> what's wrong <laughs> next time on silo season one episode three episode three